And of course, there was not going to be any surprise at the top of that draft. We knew how that was going to go. We knew Trevor Lawrence would go. Then we knew Zach Wilson would go. Everybody who knew, knew that the draft did not actually start until the Niners jumped on the clock with the third pick overall. So... The heady play, the smart play would have been to tune in a little bit late because the third pick really was officially the first pick, except I didn't do that. I'm not about that life. No, you know me. I run out every single ground ball. I run out every pop-up, every fly ball. Last night, I'm sure as hell glad that I did that because who did I see up on the stage to start the NFL draft? The commissioner, Jarvis Landry, Bernie Kosar, Joe Thomas, and Danica. Like, I knew she was in Cleveland because she told us, just as she told us that she was going to ruin some Cleveland tenderonies when she got there. Now, remember, that team had sent her there as their fan of the year. And she was all about it. She was living out the Duval dream, tweeting out pics of herself in Cleveland and videos of her pre-gaming before the draft. But again, I'm sorry, what? I mean, I could not tell if that was real or I was hallucinating. To quote that kid in the dental chair or who made it to his parents' car, is this real life? Did I really just see the commissioner, Jarvis Landry, Bernie Kosar, and Danica? And last night, it was all about the 49ers. And what would they do with that third pick overall? Would they go with Mac Jones, as damn near everybody on the planet had been claiming in their mock drafts? After all, he is a pocket passer. He looks and he plays like a lot of guys that Kyle Shanahan has had success with. And yes, Niner fans would have been pissed if they gave up everything they gave up to get Mac Jones at three when for months he had been expected to go right where they were picking originally. However, in Kyle, you trust, right? You know the guy can coach. You know the guy can scheme. So let him pick his quarterback. Let him pick his quarterback, and his pick was. Uh Uh-oh! You were expecting Mac Jones, weren't you? You may have even put money down on Mac Jones. Or maybe you said, I'm not going to bite on that play fake. I'm expecting Justin Fields. And then what do they do? They go and they take Trey Lance. Man, that is so brass. That's Kyle Shanahan just putting his big brass set right on the table for everybody to see. It's brass and it's impressive. You're taking a guy who played one game in the past year. You're taking a guy who has played a total of 17 games. And he did so at the FCS level. Man, that's a hell of a move. To take a guy who was lighting up the Western Illinois Leathernecks. And you're going to drop that guy in against Aaron Donald, J.J. Watt, and Jamal Adams. But that's what the Niners did. And you know what? Man, I love it. I absolutely love it. If you do not understand why, go back to my interview with him on Wednesday. Listen back to that interview. You tell me that's not a guy that you want to buy stock in. It's a 20-year-old, and he sounds like a 50-year-old. You don't come across 20-year-olds who've got that level of maturity, wisdom, and thoughtfulness. I'm talking about a guy who's reading the inner game of tennis. He's doing it at that age. You know, so great. He's got a good mindset. What can he do athletically? Pretty much anything he wants. So we got a guy who wants to grow. He wants to get better. He has got freaky athletic ability, and he's got a mindset to match. And he's got that arm. And he's got that head. And he's got that game. We're talking again about a guy who had 42 touchdowns in the air and on the ground in 2019 and zero INTs. And he has spent a lot of time under center already, running a ton of play action. So if I'm Kyle Shanahan and I'm John Lynch, that's not a yes. That's a hell yes. No wonder Shanny was not looking to tell you that he was taking Lance instead of Jones. Why would he? And I'm sure the league appreciated that as well. Because if you already knew who the first three picks were, you would not have tuned in and you would have missed the queen herself. So yes, I love that pick for the 49ers. I love it for Trey Lance. It's a big-ass, badass swing. I'm not guaranteeing it's going to play or work. What I'm saying is it's about as brass a move as you could possibly make, and I could not respect it any more than I do. 
And when the Niners say that they're not in any rush to trade Jimmy G, I believe that too, because the market has completely dried up. The teams that needed help at quarterback got help at quarterback, so there's not going to be some bidding war for Garoppolo or some crazy market for him. But know this. They did not give up what they gave up to get Trey Lance to have him sit for an entire year after he just sat for most of the year. That would not make any sense. Just like giving up everything they gave up just to select Mac Jones never made any sense. What I'm saying is, I love that pick. And I love a lady clone kicking off the draft by sitting in the commissioner's chair. I just wish that she had announced all the picks instead of that wooden and laconic old man himself. Way to represent. Danica, I'm proud of you. Elsewhere, Aaron Rodgers was all the rage before that draft when that report broke that he did not want to return to the Packers. Remember on this show yesterday how pissed Packer fan was and how Packer fan jammed the phone lines and they were all calling in saying, man, Our GM had best not jack this up again. I mean, Packer fan was furious even before the draft, even before they had a chance to possibly jack up that pick. And that was before the story broke that Aaron Rodgers was disgruntled and he was not going to return. So where does that leave them? Where does that leave him? Can they fix this or not? 